All right, let's turn to Revelation chapter 22 as we find out how it's all going to end. You know, it's one of those things where the end of the story, they all lived happily ever after, and that's where it's going to be. John is being shown heaven, what it's like. And in chapter 22, in the continued description of heaven, he said, and he showed me a pure river of, pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. David said in Psalm 46, 4, there is a river, the streams thereof shall make glad. It's the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. The river of water of life, clear as crystal. Jesus was in Samaria. His disciples had gone into town to get some food. It's interesting, it said, and Jesus must needs go through Samaria. We wonder at that because a Jew generally didn't go through Samaria. Jesus lived in the area of the Galilee and he had been down to Jerusalem with the disciples uh, for one of the feasts. And in returning, it said he must go through Samaria, must needs go through Samaria. And as you read the story, because it was so uncommon for a Jew to pass through a Samaritan, because as the woman said to Jesus, uh, the Samaritans have no dealings with the Jews, and that was true. They, the Jews would usually go down to the Jordan River and go up through the Jordan Valley uh, to get to the Galilee region where Jesus and his disciples were living. And going through Samaria, why must he go through? Because there was a lady in Samaria who needed a thirst in her heart filled. And so as the disciples went into town, Jesus was there by the well, and she came to draw water, and he asked for a drink. And she said, why is it that you're asking me for a drink? You're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan, we don't deal with each other. And Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God, and who it was that said to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said unto him, sir, you have nothing to draw with, and this well is deep. Where are you going to get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I give, it shall, he will never thirst, but it will be like a well of Spring, water springing up into everlasting life. She said, sir, give me this water. It's interesting, Jesus talked about the water that he gives. There in heaven speaks of this river proceeding from the throne of God and uh, how that it is pure as crystal, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. John tells us that when Jesus was in Jerusalem at another time at the Feast of Tabernacles, as we came to the last day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried unto the assembled crowd, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he who drinks of the water that I give out of his innermost being, there will gush torrents of living water. And John tells us that he was speaking of the Spirit, which was not yet given. 
Back in the 21st chapter of Revelation, verse 6, And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give to him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. When Jesus is talking about thirst, he's really not talking about a physical thirst. He's talking about a deep spiritual thirst that every man has. That thirst for meaning, uh, that uh, thirst that we have for something more, realizing that uh, there is sort of an emptiness in the material things, uh, there is that spiritual thirst which we so often try to fill with material things, but it just doesn't satisfy. Just like he said to the woman, drink of this water and you will thirst again. And that's true of every worldly pursuit. Whatever it is that in your mind you think, if I just had, fill in the blank, then I would be satisfied. But let me guarantee, if you just get it, you won't be satisfied. You cannot satisfy a spiritual thirst with material things. There's only one answer to that spiritual thirst, and that is a meaningful relationship with God, because that's what you were created for. That's what God built in. As Paul says to the Romans, God made us subject unto this emptiness. And that by the design of him who created us. God created that vacuum. God created that thirst. And only God can fill that thirst. And thus Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he is the only one that can satisfy that thirst in your heart. Sooner or later, you'll come to that realization. After you pursue all of these things that you are thinking and hoping will satisfy that thirst within, when you come to the end and you're still thirsty, there's only one that can fill it, and that's Jesus Christ. So this pure river of water of life, the land of Israel was a very arid land, and thus water was very important. And uh, the fountains of living water or springs, fresh springs throughout the land were always very cherished. And uh, so as the Bible speaks about the thirst, it was something that the people really understood from a physical standpoint. But Jesus turned it over to the spiritual and made an illustration of it in that way. It tells us in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruit and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing or the health of the nations. So this street on either side uh, were trees, the tree of life. And it is one of those interesting trees that uh, bears 12 different fruit on it, a fruit of the month club. And uh, <laughs> so uh, you've got uh, 12 different kinds of fruit. Um, we had a home in Santa Ana years ago when I was in high school. And... Um, the person that had previously owned the home, I guess, was sort of a horticulturist of some sort. And uh, he loved budding different things on the same tree. So we had a citrus tree that had navel oranges, and it had uh, uh, Valencia oranges, it had grapefruit, and it had lemons, uh, all on the same tree. And uh, it was uh, just something that he liked to, I guess, bud different types of uh, buds into these uh, trees. And so a 
I, I've got a tree in my yard that has three different kinds of peaches.